You're listening to This Week in America with Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, great you're spending some time with us on the program today. Back with us is Robert Maxim. Robert was born in Cuba as a teenager, moved to the United States, grew up in California. After studying music, science, and religion, he devoted his life to write about his sleep time visits to other worlds and alien craft encounters, highlighting life's true virtues and purpose. In 2014, he published the first in a series of five legacy episodes, The Search for Love, followed by The Unholy Menace. His books have earned industry acclaim, making frequent appearances in news, radio, book fairs, and conventions. Robert Maxim, author of the Legacy Series, back with us on This Week in America to answer your questions during the course of the program today. Robert, welcome back. It's always a pleasure to have you with us on the show. Indeed. Thank you for having me on board, Rick. It is a pleasure, and we have bunches and bunches of questions to attempt to get through today. If you'd like us to, like us, like I'm going to answer your question, if you would like Robert to answer your question, you can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and where it says comments, you can forward on, or to Robert's <laughs> website, which is rgaten, R-G-A-E-T-A-N.com, and we'll address those on the program First one, I think, came out of the, the last program we did, and it's it's really interesting because we've talked about the number of religions that are out there, and it numbers into the, well into the thousands. The question is, how can you identify cults and false religions? Oh, well, you really have to have your thinking cap on uh, to be able to tell that. Uh, but... Uh, for the most part, God does not promote division, isolation, or any unique benefits to an individual, much less pits one thought against another. Everything in the infinite has merit because it's conceived from infinite energy itself. But whenever anyone wants to help you for your own good, uh, tries to convert you, doesn't have evidence or proper evidence, I should say, uh, claims to be a master or some significant figure that's wiser than you, uh, preaches you to death, invites you to belong for the sake of friendship or company, or focuses on UFOs rather than the higher self-contact, or asks you to join, uh, say, some secret teachings or society, they look out. Those are the signs and the questions maybe to ask that you watch to see if you're headed into the possibility of a false religion. What should you look for that are positives? What are things that, okay, I I like this, this is reassuring? Well, uh, everybody, of course, is at a different level of, uh, of evolution and of understanding. So someone may be ready for a certain amount of information, some other may need a little bit more. And as we scale up the evolutionary uh, stage and we progress and learn, then of course we're going to have an appetite for more advanced, more advanced uh, uh, thoughts, information, commitments. Uh, so it's difficult to tell, Rick. Uh, for some people, what they have is perfectly fine because they cannot conceive uh, anything higher. Uh, so. That's why I say that everything has merit. Even a cult may have merit. Uh, But then again, uh, for for many other individuals, they're ready to take a look at things on face value and check out the car facts. Exactly. You know, uh, because of fear, Rick, because of fear, many times we will commit to a belief because we think that there's nothing else. Because we think that, you know, uh, I don't have any friends, so this is good enough. Uh, or it's going to be too difficult to understand, and that's what holds us back. So if we have any of those thoughts, maybe it's time to check check ourselves out and, and say, well, are we really ready to put in, put in the time, not be, uh, not slack? Uh, so it's really individual. The individual has to be ready to take the next step, and of all things, they have to work for that step. It's not easy. They have to have that commitment, stick to it, and move forward. Do we sometimes make decisions based on, you've touched on it a couple times in that answer, 
camaraderie, friendship, the fact that we are in a group. We all want to be in a group and have somebody paying attention to us. Put that camaraderie ahead of meaning in what we're getting into. A lot of people do that. Uh, there are individuals that are looking for a home and they don't care what it is. Uh, it happens in, I'll give you an example. It happens in gangs. It happens in politics. Uh, it happens it happens in science. I mean, how many scientists don't I, don't I know that will stick to a specific belief even though something in the back of their mind or they're for sure know that is not really wrong, that is not really right. But they stick to it because of fame or because they're threatened or because they are part of a club. So it's no difference in beliefs, it's no different in science or even government. It's all the same issue. It's the me. What's, what's in it for me? As that sometimes is what drives beliefs, it drives people into false religions and, and even cults. Robert Maxim, our guest on This Week in America, that's M-A-X-X-I-M. He is the author of the Legacy Series, which is available on Amazon. Of course, information at his website, rgaten, R-G-A-E-T-A-N.com. And you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. So what is the impact of climate change? Well, uh, uh, climate change, uh, there's, there's a lot of political uh, discussion around this particular topic. Uh, <clears throat> but I can assure the listeners that what you're being told is not what it is. Uh, I have ed evidence on my website <clears throat> under the science tab that shows that we're suffering uh, from the effects of over 2,800 nuclear blasts. That's been going on for 70 years and the planet's natural 22 year gas cleanup cycle has basically been destroyed uh, from the radiation. This radiation has adjusted or changed the frequency <clears throat> of the magnetic field. And what's happening now is that uh, the magnetic field of this planet is picking up a whole different uh, radio station from space, from the sun, uh, and it's letting that radiation through. Now, this started, and you can see it in the data back in 1945, and so the public has been told rubbish. And it's basically aimed to gain fame and money. <clears throat> now, NOAA site, that's N-O-A-A, uh, N -O -A -A, uh, shows data that proves this. And you can see it for yourself. The data is available. Um, beneath Greenland and Antarctica. And this is on the news just about every week. Uh, they say, well, it's melting and the Earth is going to, flood and what have you and it's global warming well it's not uh, both of those uh, islands or continents are some of the hottest mantle spots on the planet and that's what's melting the ice not carbon dioxide hmm. now interesting what this mantle spot basically is imagine that the earth is a ball and there are these currents that are going up and down and up and down, like in cycles of mantle pressure, mantle heat. Well, in Greenland and Antarctica, those mantle spots are very, shall we say, uh, very wide, very powerful, very hot. They're basically going up uh, and pressing against those two, those two areas. And so all that heat is passing onto the surface. Now, you might say, well, what causes all the heat? Well, a lot of it is radiation, a lot of it is uh, circulation within uh, the mantle of the planet and the co interaction with the cores, very complicated stuff. But basically what it means is <clears throat> you have a hot spot down there that's heating up that area. Uh, volcanic actions, heat seep, all of that. Uh, let's, let's touch base on something else. Water vapor not carbon dioxide, is by far the key greenhouse gas. Oh, we're trying to eliminate emissions, okay? Try to eliminate water vapor, and let's, let's see what happens to your life. Well, exactly, <laughs> yes. I, I, I never heard that before. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, water vapor is, uh, well, put water in a microwave. 
and watch what happens. So water vapor is the key greenhouse gas, and we need it to live. So we're not going to fix uh, runaway planetary heat by reducing emissions, no. The only way to fix it is to fix that magnetic field. So what proof do we have of that? Notice that carbon dioxide gathers to the northern hemisphere, carbon monoxide to the southern hemisphere. The gases are doing this type of thing. That means that the gases are polarized, which means that magnetic field is what's having the effect. There is your proof. Now, all this can be fixed by doing what Tesla wanted to do with his tower way back then. And what it will do is it will redistribute mantle convection energy and dampen nuclear f uh, frequencies that are in the magnetic field. Uh, it will basically resort the magnetic field, clean it up. And by retuning the magnetic field, the magnetic field will stop receiving those uh, uh, energy bands from the sun and gamma rays from, you know, every, everywhere else. And instead of letting those frequencies through, it will bounce them off. And then you'll be back in the control. Why don't, why, why don't we do that? I mean, obviously somebody's got something at stake here to uh, attack it in a different way that sounds so rational. Why are we not pursuing that? I look at it this way, Rick. Uh, it means money to somebody. And as, soon, and as long as that is the case, it's not going to get fixed. It's the same thing with a lot of diseases, and I think I've mentioned this before, where there are known cures to many deadly diseases. Uh, I have some cures on my website uh, involving glutathione, and a lot of it is known, but because of money, it does not get filtered down to the public. And I would recommend you go to the website, which is rgaetan.com. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program, information there on the Legacy Series. Legacy Series also available, of course, at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Another question, is there really a lost city of Atlantis? I keep reading it's a myth that there is no proof of its existence. We've, we've talked about that before. Uh, Atlantis, did it really exist? Absolutely. It's no myth. And Legacy has tons of historical documents that are that are proving that it did, and even where. Now, <clears throat> sad to say, a lot of Finding Atlantis documentaries, um, they're, they're missing the beat. Uh, they'll say that it was in uh, the island of Thera in the middle of the Mediterranean, and some of them think that it was in Morocco, and some others think it was Western Spain, uh, and it just goes around and around. I mean, you know why? Because they don't use these references. They have not really done their homework and checked out the Carfax. So if you go to my website, uh, go to the References tab, and then look up Atlantis. All we hear nowadays is Plato's account. But I've got 27, 27 historical references and documents and listings on the subject from across the planet. And that does not include American native accounts. So now Legacy puts all this information together for easy assimilation and bringing to light Plato's story uh, just to debunk, debunk a lot, of, uh, a lot of these documentaries that really don't do their research, even though they sound very convincing. Well, it's, it's plain that Plato says this was west of the Pillars of Her uh, Heracles, which it's the, the land bridge between Morocco and Spain. Uh, and it talks about this island that was in the Atlantic Ocean. And what's interesting, it says, Rick, that even beyond Atlantis, there was another continent. So uh, that debunks just about every of these documentaries that are putting Atlantis either in the Mediterranean and Africa, anywhere in Europe. Well, you know, Atlant Atlantic Ocean, island in the middle, continent on the other side of that, that continent was America. So how did Plato know about America? So if you read Plato, you will read that right there. There's so much information at the website, and we've touched on some of the reasons to go to the website. It's rgaetan.com. And uh, 
get information, and that's what makes Robert such a valuable guest. You just don't say things, you back them up. I guess that's the old scientist in you that's still functioning, and you want verification before you're going to uh, subscribe to, to a certain theory. You'll find all of that played out at the website, and you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on directly. A question goes back to something we've talked about a lot on here that's fascinating for all of us, and that's visions. And the question is, do you have any control of your visions? Can you call up a vision whenever you want? No, I never do. They are for medicinal purposes only, and they are meant to solve uh, personal issues and behavior. Uh, I am in class, and I don't... Uh, study anything that the teacher doesn't tell me to to study. So I'm there waiting for the teacher to tell me what what to see, what to learn. And that teacher is the higher self. So <clears throat> I don't ask, I don't interrupt class, I don't guess, or use conscious mind to figure it out. A conscious mind contaminates evidence. So everything must come at the right time and for the right reasons. And, and as far as doing readings for other people, maybe I should get into that. That's really doing people's homework for them. It's always best, Rick, for everyone to learn to solve their own problems and get their own answers. So imagine we're all in school you and me, Rick, are in class. We're sitting right next to each other. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and look over to your test and see what your answer is so mm, I can copy yes. it on mine. Yes. You know, that's doing reading for other people. Uh, that's trying to get visions for other people. Uh, that is just, it's, uh, it's, I don't recommend it. I think it's cheating. And you're cheating yourself because this is an experience that you came here to learn how to do it so you can free yourself. Uh, sometimes people are really in need of help, but even even at uh, at those stages, people should realize they have it in them. They have the capability. They have the capacity to do this for themselves. It's normal. We make it abnormal because we just don't want to or believe in it. So there That's are why. there are benefits to self discovery. Absolutely. That's what life is all about. It's all about self-discovery. And we should have faith in that. And from your standpoint, visions, they're not there for amusement. They're there for a reason. And you, you respect that, is what I think you're saying with your answer. Absolutely. Uh, vision is only for medicinal and educational purposes. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program. You're listening to This Week in America. Information on Robert and a direct link to his website at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Uh, a question, do you have family members that share your belief of past lives? I'm afraid to bring it up to mine. Should I? And if so, how? Oh, Rick, my attempt had catastrophic results <laughs> but uh, as i've said on, on previous shows but you know i wasn't waylaid or afraid uh we have to realize when the right time is for things there's there is a reason for fear of, of telling and perhaps it comes from negative past experiences when death was the price for speaking up and uh, i certainly had enough of that uh, the whole world is afraid of saying, hello, my name is Robert, and I am a reincarnaholic, uh, simply because of past memories. People remember the Inquisition. They remember which burnings, and that's, that's reason enough. You know, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm afraid of being burned again. Yes. Uh, so you just remember, people are best convinced by reasons they themselves discover. So when is their time? They'll figure it out, and we, none of us should be afraid of speaking out what we feel. Uh, it is our freedom. However, we have to make sure that when we say something, it has to be not for our own enjoyment, but it has to be for the aggrandizement and evolutionary track of the listener. We should always address the needs of our listeners before our own. And if it's not the right time for that listener to be getting that information, it's best not to open up the mouth. 
Interesting. So your answer is yes, that would be good, but timing is, as, it, as in most cases, it, it's crucial to getting it done properly. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program, answering your questions. Another one, what is the purpose of life? Here's another one that could take a while to get through. Why are we here? What's the, what's the meaning of all of this? Well, it's to make sure that the Arizona Cardinals uh, uh, win the, win the uh, Super Bowl, right? That, yes, yes. <laughs> Sometimes we focus on the wrong thing. Exactly. Well, maybe, maybe you guys are not. Maybe you guys are LA Dodgers fans. That you want to you want to root them until they win the pennant. Uh, that's not what we're here. And a lot of us we t- waste time on little needy things like this. That uh, well, I like to think that I still waste a lot of time, and I look for effic- economies and efficiencies of scale. Basically, the purpose is to come down to this uh, solic level to teach your lower nature what you learned in higher worlds. And not to other people, but to you. And to be able to work out um, past experiences that need to be, shall we say, corrected, updated, and evolve this mental level upward. Now, eventually, there'll come a day when you won't have to return. And life, don't forget, is not a vacation or a football game, but rather it's a learning mission. So there are some genius kids that <clears throat> finish high school at the age of 10, for example. Now, why? Because their focus was not on playing baseball or, or you know, hanging around with friends. They, had, they were starved for knowledge and they they put their entire effort on learning but you know that's what we need to do we need to put our entire effort on learning about ourselves and shall we say get out of dodge exactly exactly yeah. mm-hmm. and information on everything we're talking about you'll find at the website i keep saying this but if you're just tuning in it's important to know that what Robert's talking about, you can get a more thorough examination at the website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com, or write to him directly, write to us, and we'll get that message off to him. We talk a lot about past lives and have a lot of questions from, uh, from listeners on past lives. Uh, this question is interesting. What are the best ways to recall past lives? How do we go about oh. looking into our past? Aha, well, here we go. The secret sauce is not to try. Past lives will come to you when you least expect it. Just understand your thoughts because they are influenced by the past. Use the self-mastery chart that I've spoken about uh, before. uh, And that includes legacy as well. And that will get your mental juices going by knowing your present you realize what you did in the past and you set a path for your future so it's all about knowing yourself and then knowing what to do for your future so study is critical self-study is pivotal the next question we have ties into that and we have several more that will come up either later in this program or, or future program is meditation helpful in trying to find out about past lives um, some meditation blocks self-awareness and that's a bad thing others learn to attune to higher self uh, do practice caution uh, I don't want to tell people not to meditate I don't pit one belief against another but uh, just don't use it as a means to relax, run away from negative feelings and relax. You want to face those feelings. You want to know them, but don't allow them to get you emotional. So if you are doing uh, meditation just to shut your mind and stop these negative feelings from coming to you, that's probably not a good thing to do. Uh, if you know yourself and you know what's coming, if you know the enemy, then you can deal with it. Shutting, shutting the door, what that is, may not be the best thing. So just be aware of that. 
If you have a question for Robert, you can contact him direct at rgaetan.com. You can uh, pass it along through our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Something, again, that we've, we've touched on here a lot, and we're all interested in advanced life and uh, uh, the, the possibility of other worlds. The question is, is there an advanced life on Mars? We're talking now about eventually going there. I think that's still sort of in the plans, back to Mars, and eventually uh, yeah. to the moon and off to Mars. Uh, what will we find there? Is there advanced life there, do you think? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, it's underground, and I have NASA pictures on my website showing, listen to this, buildings, domes, hangars, and would you believe animals? Would you believe vegetation? So go to my website and have a look. You'd be surprised. Where did those pictures come from? NASA. So they're I have, yeah. they're yeah, further I, advanced than what we believe them to be. Then obviously, well, my uh, my source knowledge on the li the human life that exists on Mars is it's underground, of course. Um, if you go to these underground locations, you'll probably pass them by. You won't see them because they are residing on a different plane than we are. I mean, you could see the evidence of it on pictures. You could see uh, buildings and domes that are at the surface, which are physical structures, but down below, uh, there is a different dimensional aspect in the cities, and they have done this for their own protection. Um, what's outside, you know, it's, it's open. It's open to, to scrutiny, but what's below, uh, it'll take some technology to be able to uh, to make contact with it. It's very well hidden. Do they wonder if there's advanced life on Earth like we wonder if there's advanced life on Mars, or are they watching us? Uh, all the above. Actually, they wonder if we are intelligent at all. Uh, and that's kind of a kind of a joke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, know, they know we're here. <laughs> they watch us for hundreds of thousands of years. Uh, they've, they've been among us. They, they are among us. Uh, but they, they shake their head and they wonder, what is it going to take for these people to wake up and, and learn to be honest with themselves and stop wasting time? Um, so that's why I say they wonder if we're intelligent at all, because apparently we're childish by comparison uh, to their intellect and their, and their love for self-knowledge. Very good answer. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program. Uh, aliens, we keep going back and touching some of the, the key themes that we've developed in, in the programs that we do with Robert. One is, is talking about aliens, and the question is, can you show scientific evidence of aliens? And I would bet you can because you've got scientific evidence for everything we've talked about so far in the, uh, the program. Scientific evidence for aliens, does it exist? I've been collecting uh, alien evidence pictures since I, was, since I worked for NASA back in the uh, early 80s. And uh, absolutely, uh, my site is filled with actual NASA pictures from the moon, Mars, even Saturn. Uh, so coming from NASA, these are not Photoshop creations. Uh, like I mentioned, buildings, spacecraft, animals. I even posted a photo that was taken back by the Zacatecas Mexico Observatory back in the 1800s. Uh, but let's, let's leave modern photography aside and let's go back to, say, ancient paintings. And I'll mention a few. How about the Nuremberg 1641 woodcut? It shows spacecraft in space, motherships. Uh, the Madonna and Child, that is an amazing painting. You even have a, a man and a dog pointing up towards his, towards his craft, right on the picture behind the Madonna. Uh, you have the 14th century Life of Mary or the Burgundy Magnificent. Uh, and I recently found Egyptian hieroglyphs with actual aliens and spacecraft on them. For reals. So go to my site and have a look. They're all up there. You'll find them amazing. And the website is rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com. We'll link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Interesting question. Can humans incarnate as animals or vice versa? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at times I meet people that I swear actually did because the way they <laughs> act. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
Uh, but all <laughs> kidding aside, uh, I don't think so. Um, but, you know, keep, but keep denying your own spiritual heritage and regenerating the past, like most of us do. And, you know, you'll find yourself down the de-evolutionary track uh, to the point where you'll find, find yourself in a less evolved world or form. Um, uh, there, there is, uh, see something I could, I could, uh, point to, um, you are where your mind is. So if your mind is on, on the negative side of expression, that's where you're going to get sucked into and that's what you will become. So word to the wise. Karma. Question about do you believe in karma? And we hear that term thrown around a whole lot. Is there such a thing? Yes, it's called responsibility. It's a fact. The sum and total of past experiences in the present. So karma is you. Karma is what you're accountable for. That's it's your shall we say it's your take home test in a sense. Interesting. So it, it does exist. Do we Absolutely. use it? Do we use it correctly when we're talking about when something happens to someone, good or bad? Well, that's karma playing out. Do, does it work like that? Uh, to some degree, yes. Uh, the part of karma that we don't understand is how to deal with it, and that's where studying the science of life is so critical. Most of us are like a vacuum cleaner. Uh, we just gorge on negativity and and just keep building, keep building karma. Uh, and you know, that bag can only take so much, so much stuff until it bursts. And a lot of people are showing that in their fears, frustrations, mental cases, it's just too much to deal with because, uh, we just keep collecting negativity and we do nothing about it. We just seek escape, entertainment, but no self-knowledge that has to be turned around for the, for the good and health of all infinite creations. This Week in America, our guest is Robert Maxim, author of the Legacy Series, available at Barnes & Noble at Amazon at the website rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com. Of course, as I keep saying, you can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on directly. Listener question, is there such a thing as real death? Mm. We talk about reincarnation and past lives as though one soul continues in different forms. Mm. Uh is there such a thing as real death? No. Can you? No. Okay, that that, that answers the question then. Thank you for helping no. me. <laughs> yeah, it, well, uh, you can get to the point where you completely absorb yourself from infinity and start all over again as an amoeba, maybe over evolving over millions of years again. Uh, but you really have to deny your birthright uh, to, to really get to the stage. So... A word to those that like to co collect karma and not do anything about it, you could eventually absorb yourself to the point where you have to start from scratch. It's not real death that you're back to infinite energy again and starting again. Why do that? The, the time to deal with your problems is now. And by the way, you can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and look at all of the past programs that we've done with the Robert, you can listen, you can watch them. So a lot of the topics we're talking about in depth, we've discussed on, on previous programs. I read once, this is a question, I read once that birthmarks are considered evidence of reincarnation. Is that true? Absolutely. And I have birthmarks and they are related precisely to past events. Hundreds of studies have been conducted on this and confirmed. And legacy details the process. So gosh, how many... How many issues have I had? That not just birthmarks, but special, but even uh, diseases. Um, uh, too much to tell in the short amount of time we have. But yes, the answer is yes. It doesn't show up just as a birthmark, but it could be a speech impediment. It could be loss of sight. It could be uh, um, uh, well, any disfiguration of the body. It's all related. Interesting. So if you go in and you're getting x-rays, for example, and they're talking about something that looks uh, a little out of the ordinary and you have no idea when this possibly could have happened, you've never had any symptoms, that could be something like a birthmark that's, that's yeah. been there from a past life. I just had a young lady 
two two days ago, and I don't give readings. I, I don't get involved in that. Uh, this young lady was uh, saying, "Well, I I wish to die. I wish to live this leave this world. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of living. I'm depressed. My chest hurts. My stomach hurts." And uh, cut the story short, uh, she said she wasn't going to live in it any longer. And uh, I suddenly saw something, and I shared it with this individual. She had been drugged in a past life. This was in uh, Inc the Inca Empire. And she had been drugged, uh, and in that drug stage, she was told she was going to meet uh, her god and, and her past family. They were waiting for her in the afterlife. Uh, and before she knew it, she was stabbed, and she died as a, as a virgin, sacrificed. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that I just had to share with her. And... Uh, this is exactly what, what happened to her. And it, so you can see that what she was saying, the way she felt, she was giving herself her own reading. She didn't realize it. All the signs and all the information was there. The pains, the desire of death, the wanting to go to another world. It, it was a complete repeat of the past. So if we paid attention to those signs, uh, those are signs of having past lives. She was giving herself a reading and didn't even know it. And a lot of people do this. I hope that helps. Well, it does. It's sort of connected that. And the next question, uh, I think you've answered, but I'll throw it out there anyway. What are signs I've had past lives? And we just talked about birthmarks and some of the other signs. So actually, signs are there. We're just not aware that they're there. We're not paying attention because we haven't been told that we should. Everything about you is the past, so... Everything that you feel and sense and think is related to the past. Pay attention. It's there. Time for a couple more questions on the program today. And once again, you can ask a question by going to Robert's website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com, or our website, thisweekinamerica.us. How are we impacted by negative actions of past lives, a viewer is asking. And an interesting question because there is carryover there, isn't there? There, is a, yeah. there are current ramifications for what the problems you've had in the past. That's right. Illnesses, uh, desires that you have today, some of the things we got done talking about is a perfect example of this. And the uh, follow-up on that is, are we tethered to our past? Do we have to heal past issues in order to live a life of our dreams in our current state? Yes. that's Everything that we talked about uh, basically uh, barrels down on this particular question. Yes, uh, you will never get rid of your past. You can only educate it and enhance it, but you can never destroy it. Listener has a question, why should I study past lives? And again, I think we've tied all of these together. It really is crucial, isn't it, to resolve those issues and to have a better life going forward? Past life matters. Yep. And, yep. and your, your knowledge of it is uh, why you're here. Robert Maxim with us on This Week in America, rapidly running out of time, but covering a lot of ground here. Uh, again, we sort of touched on this in terms of, of Mars, but is there intelligent life elsewhere? Up there, absolutely, verified. Down here, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, just look around you, watch the news, and then come back and tell me we're <laughs> living among intelligent life here on, uh, on Earth. <laughs> Are aliens watching us, a listener asked, have they ever interfered in what we do on Earth. Now, that's an interesting aspect of it. Are they watching us? And if they've been watching us, do we ever know where they've actually interfered? They sure are, and they sure have. Uh, but those that interfere, I assure you, they're going to be doing time by incarnating here on this planet eventually. Uh, recent, we can't interfere with the belief or inclinations of others, because by doing so, we commit ourselves to have to return to work that out. So don't interfere. And any, any being that does that, we'll have to come down here in due time, too. One more question, I think. I'll maybe squeeze two in here. We're covering a lot of ground. Do you believe in UFOs? And if so, what are they and from where? And we think of UFOs. UFO mm -hmm. is, is an unidentified flying object. object. That's not necessarily something we should fear. Do you believe in them? And, and what are they, if so? Well, I know, seen, met, and talked face-to-face. -face. So some are human, others just about everything you can imagine. 
although I've never seen a, 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 an octopus with a human head inside of a glass bubble. But uh, <laughs> that's taken it out a little too far, I think. Yes. Uh, just about every every star system in heavens has life. Every planet in our system has life, and there's countless dimensions above that. So, we've got plenty of company. So it would be rather arrogant of us to think we are the only ones here. Everybody else out there in this vast universe, there it, it's just uh, wider in amoebas. Oh yeah, <laughs> nope. and probably more intelligent than we are. Uh, yeah, we're back to the intelligence factor here. Robert Maxim has been our guest on This Week in America. We will be back uh, in a few weeks with uh, taking more of your questions. We've got more with, that we want to go through. A lot of progress today. A lot of the questions were were of similar nature, and we sort of lumped them together. So I think we're able to get through quite a few in the program today. You can get a hold of Robert and Robert Maxim. That's M-A-X-X-I-M author of the Legacy Series. Legacy is available, of course, at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. The description there, you can order there. Also at Robert's website, which is rgaten, R-G-A-E-T-A-N dot com. Our website is thisweekinamerica.us, and at both Robert's website and our website, you can get a hold of us by email and ask a question, and we'll address that on, uh, on a future program. And again, all the information is there on a lot of scientific-backed knowledge that you'll find on, on Robert's website. Robert, it is always a pleasure. Time goes by way too quickly. Covered a lot of ground today. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. We hope to get more questions, and we'll answer them uh, in the coming weeks. My pleasure, and thanks to your listeners for participating. Yes, you made the program possible today with your questions. Please keep them coming in. You're listening to This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us.